Hey, it's me, Jeff, again. We're going to be talking today about the fundamentals of Google Analytics. So it's some of the fundamentals we need in order to make sure that we are starting things off on the right foot, that we are doing a solid job at representing the data that we want to collect, and then just, just some of the things that we need to do before we even get into the Google Analytics interface. I want to put some of these things into a presentation just to show you what we can expect. So here's some things that we need to do right away in order to get the best results from Google Analytics. First thing is we need to make sure we send data to Google servers and then we have our account in order. We need to make sure that the data we put in there is clean. And the last thing is we need to define what our success points are going to be. If we don't know what's going to make us successful, Google Analytics isn't going to be doing much for us. And so let's talk about this. So the first thing is if we want to create or access a Google Analytics account. Now we're going to have a separate video where we're going to go and do this live, but I wanted to show you what it's like to create a Google Analytics account. So first thing you do is if you have never been in Google Analytics before, you're gonna click on create a new account and it's gonna show you something like this. It's gonna say, here's the steps you need to do in order to get Google Analytics to work. And it's not that difficult to get it to work. Basically, you sign up for Google Analytics, you add code to your website, and then data starts coming in. And then you start learning about your audience. So this is how Google simplifies what we're gonna be doing here. And I can tell you this process is pretty straightforward and I've had many times where I've been able to put Google Analytics on a new site in as little as five minutes. So it doesn't take very long to get things going. But as you probably know, just because it's easy doesn't mean that you're doing it the right way. And so I want to make sure that we have some warnings in place as we go forward. So when you do choose the new account and you sign up, you're going to want to choose that you want to track a website. Now note here that it does say, do you want to track a mobile app? If you do develop mobile apps for your company, then you have the opportunity to track those apps using Google Analytics as well and you would choose that option. But for the purpose of today's training and the purpose moving forward, we're gonna be talking specifically about your website. You choose the settings you want for sharing data with Google and their partners. Uh, I recommend clicking on Google products and services. You need this if you want to link Google AdWords and Google AdSense and Google Webmaster Tools. That box needs to be checked as well as uh, technical support. If anything goes wrong in Google, and you want them to evaluate what's happening in your account, you'll need to check that box. I also recommend uh, if you want to benchmark your site versus other sites that you use the benchmarking feature as well. Now, some people can't share their data anonymously or they have policies within their company where they do not want to do that. So in that case, you need to uncheck the benchmarking. Then once you do that, you're gonna get a piece of code that they want you to put on your website. And so remember back to our lesson two videos, we talked about how this is all JavaScript technology and how we shouldn't freak out when we see code because it's pretty straightforward. And what you do is you take this code, you'd put it into a text file, and then you'd send it on to your web developers and have them put that on your site. Or you could use something called Google Tag Manager to have that all handled for you as well. And now we're going to have lessons in the future talking about Google Tag Manager, so I'm not going to do more than say if you are looking at creating a new Google Analytics account or if you're getting it on there for the first time, you may want to consider using Google Tag Manager to start off because there's a lot of functionality that it enables in the future and a lot of uh, it'll save you a lot of pulling out your hair in the future as well. Next thing I want to talk about is how do you structure your account. So the next thing is an account structure. So within Google Analytics, you have an account and you know what your account number is defined by this UA number. So it's UA and then I put some X's in there, but it's going to be a number for you. That's your Google Analytics account number. And basically anything that goes into that UA number is within your Google Analytics account. Now within an account, and we define this during our terminology session, you're going to have web properties. You can have one web property or you can have many web properties. The limit in Google Analytics for, for most of us is 50 web properties per account. Now you probably don't need that many. Some of you are going to get by with just one. But each web property you create, you notice how your UA number gets something put on at the end. So there's a dash one and a dash two. These are basically just Google's way of differentiating between each web property. Now the web property number, the UA number, with the dash one and the dash two is where you're gonna send data to in Google Analytics. And so that's how you know where you're sending data to based on which UA number you choose. So going back to that JavaScript code we looked at previously, that's how Google knows that you want to track certain data. And then, as we talked about in our terminology session, each web property is going to have views. Now, I recommend that each web property have the, at least two views, 
And one is applies your filters and one is one that's unfiltered. Now going back to our explanation of filters, remember how we talked about just like in your house with your furnace, you want to filter your air so you're only breathing the best air. Most of the time you're going to want to filter your data too so you're only getting the best data possible. But I also recommend leaving one view unfiltered because sometimes you need to diagnose what went wrong or sometimes you need to look at things without that filter in place. Just like how you'd want to see what's the quality of the air in my house, you might want to see what it's like coming out of the furnace. That's the unfiltered version. And then also you want to see what it looks like when the filters are in place. And so that's why you'd want to remain with one unfiltered view. And the other reason why is because unlike a furnace filter where that's pretty foolproof, there are things you can mess up with filters on your website. Now I don't want to get, I don't want to scare you too much, but just know that filters do permanently change your data because it's happening before that data gets put into the Google Analytics system. So just keep that in mind is that you always want to keep one view unfiltered. Then we're talking about clean data. So this is really how we do these filters. So the first thing I'd recommend, and this is a fundamental thing, is that if you are tracking your website, make sure you don't track yourself. If you're tracking yourself already, or if you're tracking yourself and including you, your, your visits into your website data, I would stop doing that immediately. Because what ends up happening is if you're tracking yourself, you can think that your traffic's doing really well, but in reality, it's not that good because you're showing up in your own reports. And so don't be like, like this cat who thinks it's a lion. Make sure that you are filtering yourself out. So how do you do that? Within the administrator section of Google Analytics, now you do need to be an administrator or have certain privileges, which is the edit privileges on your account. In order for this to happen, you can go into the admin section, choose filters, and then you can apply a filter around your IP address. Now we are gonna do a live training session where we do this together within Google Analytics. And so know that we are gonna walk through this step by step as we go through this. But right now I just wanted to say, remember this is a fundamental of analytics is that we have the right data coming in. So like, we have plenty of sections to talk about filtering. For now, just know that if, if you want to make sure the right data is coming in, make sure that you can filter yourself out. Here's some rules when it comes to filtering. Always create a backup profile with raw data. We talked about that. If you're a large organization, you can filter out your ISP, which is your internet service provider, or a range of IP addresses. If you have more than 10% of your traffic is showing up as, a, as your own internal traffic, that's gonna create a big problem. It's gonna mess up the statistics that Google Analytics shows you about who's visiting your website, and you're not gonna be able to make as good of decisions because of that data. Use advanced segments if you wanna go back in the past and clean up some of your historical data. And we'll talk about that as we go forward. Some of the patterns are not always very obvious, and you can use annotations in your account in order to share knowledge between your teams. Now we will talk about what all these things mean as we go through these upcoming lessons. The last thing is defining the goals of your website. So we wanna make sure that we define the goals of our website. And really what it comes down to is being able to answer the question, what is the purpose of my website? Now, that might sound like one of the most basic and dumb questions you've ever heard when I say, what is the purpose of your website? But you'd be surprised how many companies can't answer that question. So like this could take all day. I've been in rooms, I've been in meetings where we spent hours and hours trying to figure out what the purpose of a company's website was. And we're talking about big companies, billion plus dollar in revenue companies. They don't really know what the purpose of their website is. It's pretty sad when you think about it. So this could take all day, but for the purpose of getting this thing going and keeping us honest here, we're gonna assume that you know what the purpose of your website is. And once you know what the purpose of your website is, you really want to understand how consumers make decisions and how each of these things they could do influences that purpose. And so this is a typical marketing funnel where somebody's going through the different processes before they purchase. You see at the bottom, this is when a consumer purchases. There's a lot of steps that, that person or that consumer needs to go through before they make a purchase decision, either on your website or another website. And so your marketing funnel is basically showing the different areas that happen within that process. Now, most of us, our goal is to have somebody purchase from us, right? Our goal of our website is to get sales, but we realize that it's valuable to track the things that happen leading up to that point. And so when we talk about Google Analytics and we talk about getting this configured in our analytics tool, we break it down into two different things. One is a macro goal, which is something that makes you money. It's like the direct revenue making opportunity on your website. And then there's micro goals, the things that are really nice, it's positive that these are happening, 
but they do not necessarily give us direct revenue. Now going back to our funnel, we can see that the bottom part is the only thing that really makes us money. The rest of those things are micro goals. So if we wanna see how we're doing with our marketing, we'd wanna track the macro goals because that's what's making us money. We'd also wanna pay attention to some of these micro goals as well. And you can set this up within Google Analytics. You can set up to 20 of these in your individual view. And you go in and you choose from either a template or you create your own description. And then you tell Google how they can track that goal. Now we will have a live les lesson where we walk through this again, but I just wanted to set the tone for where this is gonna be. You can set it up based on when somebody visits a certain page on your website, when they do something within your browser window, which is an event, or based on how much time they spend on the site or how many pages they view. The most common one here, which we're gonna use probably 75% of the time, is gonna be a destination goal. So that's the first one here. And when you set up a destination, you basically choose what URL you want to track, where when they visit this page, usually it's a thank you page, it means that they were successful. And then you assign it a value, and you can even set up a funnel to track the different steps that somebody needs to go through in order for that to happen. Now, like I said, we have plenty of time to talk about these things. I just sort of wanted to set up to say that if you are gonna get going with Google Analytics, and you wanna make sure that you have the fundamentals in place, these are the three most important things to pay attention to. So to summarize those three fundamentals, here's the things that we need to do right away to make sure we are doing a good job by Google Analytics. The first thing is we need to make sure we send data to Google servers and that we are identifying our account and we have an account in place. If we don't have an account, we can't really send them data and they wouldn't know who was sending it anyway. We need to make sure that the data we have putting in is clean. So we need to make sure that the data we have is at least not tracking ourselves and that it's coming in clean. Remember, just like you wanna breathe clean air, you wanna have clean data coming in. And then we need to define what our success points are. And this is good for two reasons. One is it's good because you can set up your goals in Google Analytics, but even better is that now you can answer that question, what is the purpose of my website? Because if you can't answer that question, no tool is gonna save you. No technique is gonna make you better. You need to be able to answer that question. Otherwise, none of this really matters. And so that's how you can get through the fundamentals of Google Analytics. And now you're ready for video three where we're gonna talk about some more cool things you can do with Google Analytics.